You're listening to Around the Valley on Mid Valley News. Today is July 3rd, 2012. And we have some guests for you today. I'll let everyone just introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Kelly Middleton. I'm with the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. Hi, uh, my name is Vince Wong. I'm actually a life insurance agency uh, agent and also an entrepreneur. Hello, I'm Iduma Resendez, and I'm with Familia Unida Living with Multiple Sclerosis. I'm Sia Flores, and I'm part of the Rock and Rollers on New Delhi Radio. My name is Art Landing, Rosemead Qantas Club, and editor of the uh, Reporter with News of Rosemead. All right, guys. Well, that's a great little group. I'm excited for today. This is actually the biggest group we've ever had for the show, and I'm very happy you could make it today. And uh, we'd like to start off maybe sharing some different things that, that they have coming up, and we'll we'll come back at the end of the show and talk about it a little more in detail, but I know everyone's doing some interesting things. Well, of course, the big news is the celebration of the 4th of July at the Rosemead uh, Park tomorrow. We're going to be starting out at 10 o'clock in the morning with a parade and entertainment in the afternoon. Uh, getting into the evening, there's going to be a circus clown, a magic act, and then the raffle winners. And then at 9 o'clock, everything blows loose with uh, one of the San Gabriel Valley's only two fireworks displays. We have one in Rosemead. There's another one, I believe, further out. Yeah, I think Ballin Park and Rosemead are the only two cities in the, our, our local area that have fireworks shows, at least Wow. Legally. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really is a shame. I think it has to do with what you think costs and uh-huh. insurance and, and who knows what. I do know San Gabriel is having a children's parade in the morning mm-hmm. and a, a penny uh, fair where you can go and play games, carnival games for a penny. So that should be fun. Well, we're having a barbecue at our house, so when we're in there, so it's... <laughs> yeah, I think that's part it of why... always affects the neighbors, you know? Yeah. The, the, the cooking and the camaraderie. Yeah. You know, just yeah. having everyone come out. That's it's a great really Fourth nice, of July experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good. What, what else do you guys have going on? Uh, what have you been up to? Well, for us, we've had a, a challenge that we're working on here in El Monte and in the South El Monte area. It's an invasive mosquito that um, hopefully by now most residents have heard about. It's called the Asian tiger mosquito. And we found it last fall in um, kind of the center portion of El Monte, actually. And then as we looked out in our neighboring vector control district to the south of us, looked in their area, we found more and more of them. Yeah. One of the things I think is interesting about this story is uh, I had never heard of the vector control before. I don't know if you guys have. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about what vector control does. Sure. Yeah, and you're not the only one. And I'm still I, thinking about the tiger mosquito. Tell me what that <laughs> looks like. <laughs> she actually brought one, so we'll think I can describe okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I appreciate this opportunity because you're not the only one who doesn't know um, that we're out there. And we're a public agency, so we serve the residents of um, 23 cities in the San Gabriel Valley. And it is funded through um, a benefit assessment that property owners pay. So all of the residents out here already have our services, so they can contact us, so we come out and help them out at no cost. And our goal is to minimize and monitor for diseases that insects like uh, mosquitoes primarily and also fleas and ticks can transmit to people. Oh, okay. Do you ever deal with possums or anything like that? That's becoming a new problem for us and specifically in some of the other parts of um, Southern California. There's a um, bacteria called murine typhus that's transmitted from possums to their fleas and then on to domestic cats oh. and brought in and infects wow. people. Oh, that's like the plague almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so back to this mosquito. Tell us about the mosquito. Uh, where does it come from? When did it first start showing mm-hmm. up here? And is it getting worse? Is it getting better? Why, why should we care? Yeah, this mosquito, um, it originates from Southeast Asia, and we don't know for sure how it got here this time. We've had infestations in the past where the mosquito is being imported in cargo containers of lucky bamboo plants. Oh. It's also been imported into other parts of the U.S. Um, the eggs are transported in used tires that are brought across from for recycling. So, um, But it looks like this particular strain, we had it tested, and it looks like this particular strain is more closely related to those in Southeast Asia. So we think it may be a direct import here. Um, the real concern with this one is that it is... Um, a fabulous vector or transmitter of diseases to humans. It's one of the best out there. It can transmit 22 some different viruses to people. 
if it gets established here in our local area, then not only is it going to be a daytime menace for us, it's a real aggressive daytime biting mosquito. So if you have them in your yard, they will come out and find you and make your barbecue quite miserable. Jeez. And that's one of the things that's a sign of, of yes. this is the mosquito. It's in the daytime. Right. It's one of the right. few in the Bites daytime. Bites during the daytime. Yeah. So if you see any of that, please give us a call. I mean, that's a key indicator. And so what happens when someone calls you? Do you guys come and uh, mm-hmm. quarantine the property? or No. <laughs> no, we come out and help them out. And what we're looking for is where are they breeding? They lay their eggs in and around sources of standing water. So we're looking for small containers, um, potted plant dishes, buckets, anything that's holding water that the immature mistages are living in. And if we find them, then we'll work with the resident, teach them what they need to do to kind of eliminate those areas from their property. And then we can also treat their yards for them to to try to kill the adult mosquitoes. Got it. And so what's the phone number that someone should call? Um, Our phone number is area code 626-814-9466. And you can also go online at sgvmosquito.org. Got it. And you actually have a mosquito for us to look at. I brought right? one. I wanted you to see how let's, small it was. Let's see it. If you guys want to hand it around? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want to describe it. it uh, Lucia, I see you taking a peek. What do you think of it? It's so small. <laughs> I thought it was going to be bigger. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. I thought it was some cactus juice. I was going to take a look at This is exactly what it looks like. It's in green water. And let me see. Yeah. So it's very small. It's not a big... I was expecting... Uh, Something bigger. I'm not yeah. even sure if it's in there. It's kind of oh, yeah. it's kind There's of darker little, than a regular oh, wow. mosquito. It looks like right? a small black fly in there. It They're does. about a quarter inch or so. So there's more than one in here, I see. Um, down in the water, there may be still some of the immature stages left. Yes, uh, and there is one crawling around. Right, and there's wow. an adult that emerged out of that water, and you can see exactly. it's just a tiny, tiny bit of water, and that's all it takes for them to complete a, an entire life cycle. Jeez, wow. So bottom line, if you're at your Fourth of July barbecue and you see some darker mosquitoes in the daytime, you need to call yes. this number, which is... 626-814-9466. Nice. And they're not going to take your property. They're, they <laughs> no. are just going to help you. No, that's what we're and, there for, to help Oh, and out. actually, and you guys have been spraying a little bit during the day, right? And uh, No, we've been going out and doing some larger neighborhood scale treatments in the early morning hours. And uh, we did one a week or so ago, and we're going to be going back out into that same area and treating it. Um, it looks like Friday. We're still working out the details, but we're going to try and do it again this coming Friday. And we may hit some other neighborhoods in that area. Yeah, because I read El Monte and West Covina, right? Or is that something else? No, just El Monte, oh, just South El Monte, Monte area. South Monte. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Moving along, mm-hmm. let's hear about uh, Familia Unida. You guys have a wheelchair wash coming up that Art had mentioned last week, and that's how we got in contact with you guys. Thank you. And um, yeah, t- tell us about what you do and what's going on well, with you. Well, thank you for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. Oh, we're happy um, that you're here. This is our ninth annual wheelchair wash. People say, oh, you wash cars. I said, no, this is a day where we roll out the red carpet and then individuals living with different types of disabilities uh, roll in in their wheelchairs and we do uh, once they go through the wheelchair then they can get a blessing if they'd like to from a priest a father whoever is there to welcome them then they go into um, a booth where they can have uh, their wheelchair washed and then it's detailed tune-up and then it's waxed and then right after they're done with that, uh, they can go to another booth. Why not get a haircut, a makeover, oh. a massage? Wow. And it's it's really a, a beautiful day. And then they stay uh, till 6 p.m. and they mm. listen to a live concert. We have delicious food that's donated from our, our friends that keep growing every year. Okay. I have two questions. Sure. Where is this taking place? Thank uh, you. How much does it cost? Let me tell you. It's taking place at the East LA Civic Center. It used to be hosted in our house, and uh, not our house. It feels like our house, our little office, but we've we've evolved to the East LA Civic Center. And that's close the to ELEC, right? Yes. Let me give you the uh, the address, if I may. Sure. It's forty eight zero one East Third Street. Los Angeles, California, 90022. It's on a Sunday from starts at 10 and it continues till 6. And the cost, the value per person is about $150. And for this day, we say don't worry about illness, pain, disability. Just come and enjoy at 
it has already been paid for. So there is no cost for all the individuals and families. Well, that's great. And so can anyone come? Anyone can come. We have our Rosemead uh, Kiwanis. Uh, they come every year. They're coming out to uh, help set up. We have our students from USC, UCLA, neighbors come and join us. And it's a day really about celebrating the Americans Disabilities Act, bringing yeah. attention to, you know, people with disabilities have many abilities, and it's a lot, a lot of fun. So that's I invite you all to come out. That's great. And you also have um, an office in Rosemead, right? Or you work in Rosemead? Yes. Well, I, I'm a resident from Rosemead, and every month we host uh, monthly support group meetings at the Garvey Community Center. We've been hosting meetings at previously at the Rosemead Community Center, but as you know, it's been under construction, so we've moved to the Garvey Center, and we've been there since 1998. Got it. And you, so you guys are uh, an organization that works primarily with people with MS. It, it started with uh, supporting individuals and families living with multiple sclerosis, and today it has evolved to serve individuals that are living with any kind of disability because we've learned in the process that MS or, dis- or, or disabilities does not discriminate, and it mm. started in my house. I, oh, wow. I was um, I was 28 years old. My girls were three and four, and literally from one day to the next, I was rushed to the hospital. I was paralyzed for about a year wow. and uh, went through being in a wheelchair, seeing firsthand the discrimination, the isolation, and uh, Familia Unida is recognized in the country as the first MS organization for the Latino community, wow. but today it's evolved to serve everyone. Oh, that's interesting. And you know, tell tell our listeners a little something about MS, because I know it's kind of something you're either familiar with or you're not. Yes, so. thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, well, what I learned about multiple sclerosis for me was that it I went from walking to not walking uh, in the early 90s there wasn't a lot of information in Spanish but what I did find out is that it's a uh, chronic illness where there is no cure there's over 500,000 individuals uh, living with MS in the United States over 2 million in the in the world and uh, every day uh, a person is given the diagnosis of living with multiple sclerosis. So it attacks your central nervous system, which means that it can attack any part of your body since the nerves control your muscles. So for some individuals, it can give them paralysis. It can affect their ability to speak, the ability to swallow. It can cause visual impairment, walking uh, problems. Major depression is known among those living with multiple sclerosis. And it's it, it can also attack your spinal cord. And right now, there's different types of treatment drugs. And there's, uh, unfortunately, the people that we see living with them as there's more of a progression every year and uh, doctors say I'm in that really small percentage that is actually doing well I'm, I went from being in a chronic MS to walking with leg braces uh, using an electric scooter and now I can run and walk and dance with you if you want to well that's interesting that we're talking about all these these health things because uh, one of our other guests mm. Vince uh, deals among other things with insurance and uh, we had a talk yesterday about uh, health insurance and how you know people are living longer nowadays uh, than they ever have in the past and how that's changing things uh, in that industry. Uh, Vince, would you like to give us a few words about what you think is going on and introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Vince Fong. I'm a life insurance agent myself. I came about with this type of insurance was that um, I used to work for a company thinking that uh, having life insurance with the former employer allowed me to protect myself. However, I realized that once I quit my job or so forth, that I'm no longer protected in terms of protection. So uh, the life insurance industry has gone through major changes several years back in uh, 2007. No longer do you have to uh, basically pass away to pass on your beneficiary uh, a policy to your loved ones. You can actually use your life insurance policy for critical, chronic, and terminal illness to it. So which means if you were to have critical, chronic, and terminal illness, you can actually use the life insurance policy to cover that expenses. Hmm. In, in, in addition to that, too, you also get coverage for your, uh, in case something happened to you, so they also pay you out for, for your face policy. In addition, there's also, you can use that 
protection uh, to increase your portfolio and actually give you an income protection when you retire. So the question remains to ask to either uh, live too long or you die too soon. In between those two gaps, you have to cover yourself. So that's what I realized about that. Got it. So just just to recap, uh, you said you know in the past that you usually had to pass away before you could get your life insurance yes. money, right? And that's why you always hear these cases of you know people. I don't know, risky business or sketchy business to collect on someone's life insurance, yes. right? And you also hear the other situation of people basically going bankrupt because they got sick because they can't pay their bills, right? right. The medical bills. So you're saying, is there something in between where um, you don't have to pass away to collect the money to pay the bills for your life insurance? Exactly. So um, here's a question I wanted to ask is, for example, um, just say you survive a heart attack, okay? And... You call an insurance company that you had prior before and say, hey, I'm just, I survived a major heart attack. Can I access some of my life insurance policy to pay for the bills? If you have a old insurance policy, that company would basically tell you in layman's term, sorry, I'm happy that you survived a heart attack. However, based on your policy that you had before, basically you have to die to use the policy. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. For as a consumer, it's like, why do you want to buy life insurance if you cannot tap into the policy? Because you want to live longer instead of just dying not to use a policy. So basically, now you can actually use the policy in case of a heart attack, access that money to cover yourself. So then you don't have to have a financial burden for your family. Got it. Well, that's really it. And what's your uh, contact information? Uh, my phone number is area code 626 233-8842. And I will tell you from uh, the personal experience of our firm, what he is talking about is one of the new trends in the insurance industry. You say about 2007, it sounds about right. But this is an entirely new concept because you are combining your disability, you're combining your retirement fund. In some cases, there's one company I know of where they actually give you a retirement annuity if you do not utilize your benefit by age 65. They can uh, give you a retirement annuity for the rest of your life. Or, of course, if you do die, then your family has the money to take care of your mortgage to do things uh, necessary to support the family when the breadwinner dies. So this is really something that everybody in their financial planning should be looking at. And apparently I have a friendly competitor over here, but I'll tell you, I think everybody in our industry will tell you this is something that people should be looking at because if you're not thinking about it and planning for it, there's no way of getting it after the event has happened. Mm-hmm. You need to have it ahead of time. Okay, yeah, Art, I didn't know you were in the insurance industry. I own the uh, San Gabriel Valley Tax and Business Services firm in San Gabriel. I've been with financial planning for about 40 years. Oh, okay. So uh, that is, I've actually retired my own insurance license. My wife does it now. I do the things I do with Kiwanis. But this is something that I've lived with all of my life. And I absolutely have to endorse the concept that he's, uh, he's giving you here. I think one of the problems that people have is they say, well, I have no money, so I can't have insurance. But well, You'd be surprised how little you can do it with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I want to add to that question. You've got to take a look. Um, most people actually buy term life insurance, but the term life before is basically you, you pay out when someone died. Okay? Uh, the, uh, the company I work for, they actually give you a term life, which is the face value, in addition to... A couple of option writer in terms of critical, uh, critical terminal and chronic illness writers. So term life also have this type of options included into the policy itself now. So no longer are you um, tied into just you know you have to die to use the policy. You can actually use that within ten years term to cover critical terminal or chronic illness too. Yeah, hmm. yeah I think it's definitely something that you people should call someone about to get more information about because if you've never been exposed to the idea uh, it's kind of overwhelming but the concept I think is a good concept Um, speaking of um, things happening to you that you don't want happening to you going back to the mosquitoes um, what happens if this mosquito bites you what kind of uh, things can it give you what should you do well currently luckily we don't have any diseases that we're kind of watching for um, that this mosquito is transmitting our big concern is that it's an excellent vector of lots of different things like dengue and chikungunya, uh, West Nile virus, even canine heartworm for our pets. And so the big concern is that if we have the mosquito living in our neighborhoods and then we have somebody that travels to one of these endemic areas, they pick up 
uh, dengue or chikungunya, they come back infected and get sick here locally, then that mosquito can pick it up and spread it, and we can have a local outbreak. Oh, I see. We did have a West Nile virus outbreak we recently. We do didn't? have West Nile. Oh, we do. Yeah, oh. every year we have West Nile. We had uh, West Nile showed up here in um, 2003, and we have seen it every single year. In fact, we just started seeing activity again in Los Angeles mm-hmm. County over the last week or so. Jeez. It yeah. makes me uh, wonder, you know, how do we know if it knows to stay within that zip code, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, how do we know if it's not going to be visiting us during our barbecue in Fourth of July? Yes. And are you open on Fourth of July, you know? No, but we, we can leave us a message. We'll be out there on the 5th. <laughs> okay. But the problem is people transport them. You know, they buy a plant in one community and they, they move or they, they take recycled tires from one neighborhood to another and they just move it around, carry the mosquito with them. Yeah, one of the things I learned about... Uh, by reading an article, uh, one of our colleagues wrote, Krista Mill, because he combined two topics, the uh, the mosquito and uh, what was the other uh, infestation that we had recently? Uh, something with the oh, orange. The, the, orange. the citrus psyllid. Citrus psyllid, yeah. yeah. And something I learned of the reading that article is that I guess all of our orange trees, you you can't grow them. You have to graft branches on, and that's how they're all, you know, and yep. I never knew that. Know that. And so um, they had this rule, you know, don't graft a tree branch on from another city because the uh, same reason. We don't want these these oh, things to be spread. To you know, in this global climate now, we everything is really just moving from country to country with the ease of an airplane ride. Yeah, and I know those um, shipping yards in, was it San Pedro? They're just completely completely full, you know, I, because the, oh, yeah. um, the boats can't fit from China. They can't fit through the Panama Canal. And so everything gets shipped across the U.S. Everything comes into Long Beach. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, well, moving on. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to, oh, go ahead, Art, go ahead. I'm uh, just going to point out, coming back to what Irma was talking about, they have four different areas with the programs that they do this Amelia, you needed to help people, not just with MS, but also the other uh, various disabilities. I happen to have a list of them here from one of our uh, summaries. Wow, of thanks, Art. For <laughs> I brought this along. I, Very nice, thank and you. We have the kid, what they call the care program. Why don't you tell us about all these? I mean, thank I'll you. Let you use this. Thank you for that, if that's all right. Yeah, please, please, please. Okay. Well, uh, the, the big day, of course, is the wheelchair wash, and I want to make sure I, I give them the telephone number because that's important for that day. Yeah, please. They want to call to get more information to get your wheelchair washed and just be pampered. It's 323 261 Five five six five. Great, and we always tell people's websites too because you yes, have it on their website, yes. right? Yes, it's uh, www.msfamiliaunida.org. And um, let's see here. Well, we have different uh, programs, and they're all uh, based come from the concept of of love, right? So we have our care program. So the care stands for counseling, advocacy, referral, and empowerment, where we help uh, those that want to learn more about. What is happening with me? My life has changed. Uh, we also have our, our uh, Familia Unida Employment Service Program, where we help those who are receiving SSI and SSDI benefits learn about their employment options, about going back to work, that transition. So we provide the job readiness, the uh, connecting them with the different employers. Yeah, I think that's good. A lot of times, you know, people don't know that they actually have resources available because they True. think, you know, I'm broke, I don't have anything. Exactly. You know, Everything we do is at no cost. Yeah. And then we have our Happy Program which stands for Health Access Personal Investment, and that comes from the uh, support group meetings and giving them uh, guest speakers, uh, comedians come out, make us laugh. We have tons of friends that just come out and uh, make a difference. We now, I'm, I'm excited as I'm, oh, and we have our love program. This We were thinking about how do we, I love, our love. Yeah, yeah. I'm serious. I'm and let me tell you what it stands for. It stands for Leadership Opportunities for Sittal Engagement. And our goal is, to, in this program, is to mentor, mentor our youth. And that's how we bring in our different uh, students from master to bachelor level represented all the different universities so we have a cooperative agreement with the different universities we've been doing this for about 10 years and thanks to the Raybell Foundation some of the students get like five thousand dollars stipend a year to come and be with us for about their whole time they're here but something you haven't learned about then why I've been so busy lately is we've been uh, contacted by uh, registered nurses who are have grants from other places who are saying we want to be a part of the love program I said are you serious and they said yes and so I thought we needed to be an RN to host 
registered nurses, but no, they're going to start going and doing the home visits with our counselors. They're going now. We have another program since just the, this month, okay? And it's our emergency food pantry mm-hmm. on Thursdays from one to four. We're now giving out uh, vegetables and fruits and emergency food thanks to the four breads and two fish nonprofit that is partnering with us and every Thursday they come the community comes it doesn't have to be individuals living with MS or disabilities you don't have to show all this identification to prove that you you know that you need food you just stand in line and you come and get some food I think that's great it's great to hear all these different partnerships that you guys are working with you know I'm a big believer in that and uh, especially now you know when there's less funding to go around exactly it's kind of you know I don't want anyone to have struggles but it's a blessing in disguise in that we're for to learn about other people's uh, groups and of you know, goals. I sat in my office just literally in tears uh, when I received this call last week because you know I keep saying you know I need more than my passion to serve we need the right funding we need the right partnerships because how can we continue the people are not going away there's all these budget cuts with the government there's all these budget in our facility there used to be seven other organizations we're the only ones left wow Wow. so we're taking on everyone else's yeah Mm -hmm. and And we can't say no so these partnerships are crucial more than ever our community needs to work more together and figure out creative Mm -hmm. uh, creative ways to continue to serve one of the partnerships uh, 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 one of the partnerships that brought you here actually is that I know you spoke to Rosemead Kiwanis yes. and Art is a very great Kwanian and so you know he <laughs> talked about you, you're, you're uh, oh, well, Art's embarrassed uh, <laughs> tell me I missed it you didn't tell me about that Art. so you know uh, Art was talking about all the stuff that you do last weekend so all oh, great let's bring her in and hear it right from oh. you so you know even just talking about things is a great resource because uh, mm-hmm. you know you just never know who's going to hear what and say, and say what to what uh, did you want to say something Art? Well, I was just going to be pointing out that most of the people that I have met in their organization, they are not just people there with their hands out as though, you know, oh, help me, now I've got MS. You know, I've had some of my own physical problems. That's not their attitude. There are people there, most of them, who are actually working. There's one who is serving as a judge pro tem in the Superior Court when he's not attending MS meetings. He has a job, Mm -hmm. but he operates out of a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of people that you have that have MS. They are normal people with a problem. Yeah. We had Mr. Osborne, the son of Ozzy Osborne. He's one of the oh, actors. Oh, that's new right. father, new father, two week year old, ba- two week old baby, and all of a sudden he's diagnosed with MS. Mm-hmm. Now he's still out doing everything that he would normally mm-hmm. do, acting, swimming, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. now he has to be contending with this disease. Yeah. And if we realize that just because you have a problem, whether it's MS or cancer or whatever, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that your life ends. My mm-hmm. life did not end. You were talking about heart attacks and whatever. Mm-hmm. I was given a 5% chance of living about four years ago. I was on dialysis for six months. Now I'm off of it. I don't have anything, pistols mm-hmm. or anything else in my arm. But I came that close to dying a few years ago. I'm on borrowed time. I'm an old man. Mm-hmm. But I'm here serving and helping, doing the things that I am for people. I know Irma has been through the same thing. And when you've had an experience like that, it motivates you. Mm-hmm. And that is the kind of people that I see in Familia Unida. And that's why our key club is going to be there at the car wash helping. It's why we're doing what we can to help with these other programs. And if we could all as a community be giving of ourselves in whatever areas that we can do, I think that we can compensate for a lot of these budgetary cutbacks and whatever. We cannot afford expensive government has to come from volunteers. That's nice. You know, the thing about uh, what Art just said is, Art Art doesn't lie. (laughs) (laughs) Art doesn't sugarcoat things. (laughs) And so, you know, to him to say something like that, it's it's a very big compliment. And uh, And I see in our communities, you know, when I walk around, you know, in the market or wherever, you know, and we start talking to people, it's like, we all have... We all have a heart. Find your passion. You know, look into your community. There's so many, you know, let's have these conversations because the more we communicate, the more we can see what we're inspired to do. And that's that's what we got to do. And, you know, something that's, uh, it's not as deep, but it's interesting and it's nice and should be talked about, I think, is we're publishing a story that comes out tomorrow on our Mid-Valley News that's based on um, something on your website Mm. that, you know, uh, Rodney King was involved Mm. uh, in um, your guys' organization to a certain extent. I don't know if you want to talk about that. 
Uh, sure. Uh, we actually had a, a dedication to Rodney uh, at this past Friday meeting, right. July the 29th. Uh, he was someone that uh, was a friend to Familia Unida for maybe like 10, 12 years. And how did Rodney King come to us? No, he doesn't have the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, but a very dear friend of his who actually lived across the street from him since he was 15. And, uh, you know, an older, um, I say, um, Americana, because just so you know, there are different cultures involved, because I want to mm. share the importance of who this person was. That's right, yes. Rodney was, uh, uh, for me, a gentle spirit, very shy person who would come with her. And in the beginning, you know, he, did, he didn't want anyone to know who was Rodney. And I said, of course, you just come and join. You don't have to sign in. We're not going to announce, you know, Rodney. He liked to be called Glenn is here and on his own you know he started doing the chicken dance with us as we <laughs> as we pass around the teddy bear because we do a lot of fun stuff like um, if the teddy bear we're, we do physical exercise right just picture people in their walkers and their wheelchairs and their families and friends all mm-hmm. sitting in circles and then Andy our, our board member turns on the music and when the teddy bear stops you have a choice you can either sing dance or say a poem <laughs> so of course Rodney would like to get up and, and sing mm-hmm. to us when he would go on off on wherever he was traveling to, he'd come back with resources for us about alternative treatments. And then one day he said, Irma, come here, I want to show you something. I said, what? And he says, look. And I was looking at this table, and he wanted to show me that he signed in his name. Really? And so, uh, you know, the last time I spoke with him was just a few months ago. He was on top of his roof, and he was working. And uh, I was, he had asked me to call him to remind him about the wheelchair wash. So the day, the last conversation I had with him was when he was on the roof. We were just having a conversation and then it ended with, uh, remind me when the wheelchair wash is coming, when we get, you know, closer to it. So the day before he had passed away, it was on a Saturday, I was going to call him to tell him the wheelchair wash is coming, you know, this date. I didn't because it was Father's Day weekend, and I said, oh, I'm going to just call him on Monday. And then Sunday, I, you know, I see it on television, and I couldn't believe it. I started to almost call him again, and I realized, no, he is gone. And for me, it's just a reminder to all of us that don't put off telling people how much you love them. Enjoy those that are around you. And on Sunday, we did, uh, you know, we, I did say farewell to him. I was a part of a very uh, private viewing with the family in the morning. And then uh, it was, uh, you know. Yeah. No, I think it's, 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 it's great that he was involved that way. And, you know, I only bring it up because I know it's important for you to get the perspective of, you know, a different perspective yes, on, on Rodney. very humble, shy, private person who is a giver. Who and we want to continue in his legacy, Familia Unida, of his peace legacy, yeah. and that's what I want people to remember. That's great. Well, that's great. Thank you. Um, well, uh, moving on to, from that, uh, we're running a little bit long. I don't know if anyone has to go, but if maybe we could talk for ten more minutes more. And and uh, one of the things I like to do is, you know, I'm from San Gabriel. I love San Gabriel and the surrounding areas. And there's always fun things that are going on that sometimes people don't realize. So we'll talk about what's coming up, but first let's talk about what anyone has done. Has anyone done anything fun lately? Every day. Every day. That's a good answer. I'm jealous of you. Uh, but, you know, I went to something interesting. Uh, you know, Arcadia has a mm-hmm. Festival on the Green series. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, they Cal are. Phil, yeah. they used to be at the Arboretum, yeah. and they were there for, I think, 15 years. I think they actually started the program there, and uh, for whatever reason, I actually think it was financial reasons, they wanted to have more concerts, so they replaced Cal Phil with someone else. I think it was the Pasadena symphony or I, exactly, I can't remember who it was so then Cal Phil said okay well we'll move across the street I think they rent out an office at the mall mm-hmm. and they have concerts now at the Santa Anita racetrack it's beautiful. and it was a great experience uh, they had three interesting uh, musicians they had Cal Phil an orchestra beautiful beautiful music they had the USC marching band Mm. And they had Vanessa Carlton, who's like a pop singer. She sings a thousand miles and different Mm. things. So it was really great. And they had um, local food. Doghouse was there. I don't know if you've ever been there, but people love that place. Um, They're they're a hot dog place. They put their buns on sweetbread. So Hawaiian rolls. Yeah. Alhambra and Pasadena. You should check it out. Um, Yeah. And they had, uh, you know, 
free face painting for the kids, pony rides for the kids. Oh. I think the ticket's like 20 to 50, depending mm-hmm. what you want to do it. But you can also bring your own wine in there, which is nice, mm-hmm. and it helps you enjoy the music a little more. <laughs> uh, I know, has anyone else done anything uh, recently in the San Gabriel Valley that's been interesting or fun? Well, I can tell you that vicariously, I have actually done about 20 activities. They're all in the community calendar. They're up on the Rosemead Quad website. You're busy, Art. Well, this is, this is, well, this is what I do. I mean, I'm a newsman. But we do have the July calendar up. When you were mentioning musical events, we have the uh, Concert in the Park series in Rosemead coming up on Friday nights. And a number of other communities throughout the Valley also have them. And I know in your Mid-Valley News newspaper, you have a summary of all of them. These are performers who are giving free concerts in the park. And most of them have their own websites. The ones that are appearing in Rosemead, we've linked to those websites on the rosemeadquantas.org website. Also, our library, and I always like to plug Sue Yamamoto's efforts. She's over great. There. She was at our meeting. Yeah, she's awesome. Oh, she did come. She Good. stayed. We had a lot of Good. fun. She's yeah. volunteering. And she is a very active librarian in Kiwani and in Rosemead. They have activities three and four days a week at the library. Everything from helping kids with their SAT exams to crochet classes to uh, various book reviews. It's all up on the website. And I would definitely suggest that people take a look at that. But you talk about fun things, there's something for everybody here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Art does a really great wow. job keeping track of events in the Rosemead area and putting them all up in one place. Because yeah. surprisingly enough, there's not there's not a source for that. That's you really know, there are certain wow. patch uh, websites. Arcadia has one. Monrovia has one. San Marino has one, surprisingly enough. Baldwin Park actually has one. Mm-hmm. But people have to go and put events up themselves. And a lot of times they don't know about it and they don't do that. Mm-hmm. But Art... Uh, actively tracks down events, which from from what I also do the same thing for Mid Valley News, and it's so much harder than it should be. <laughs> you know, it really is. But you're right; libraries have a great uh, schedule for the summer. I've seen something in two two things that are kind of interesting. I've been seen floating around the library circuit of the San Gabriel Valley. One is a disco ball making. I've seen that. I've seen Where that. Is that? You know, it was in Temple City before. I think it just happened in Ballin Park, but I'll keep my eye out for it and let you know. Another one is uh, this kind of like a NASA inspired. Uh, what is it called when you sit in like a tent and you see all the stars? Oh, uh, what is that called? I forgot. Uh, well, we're in trouble. But <laughs> they have that, and I think NASA is actually even involved, so that's kind of cool. And you and it's free. You know, uh-huh. library's great. A lot of free events, and um, our agency even goes and does programs for kids at a lot of the local libraries during the summer during their summer reading program. So we we do a bug show and uh-huh. and let them hold bugs, and kids just right. love those things. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Lucia, you've been pretty quiet today. Uh, what what is going on with you? What have you been up to? And you went to the expo, didn't you? Oh, I went to Anime Expo. It was five days at the LA Convention Center, but the only problem was that they staged it at the same time as the X Games. Oh, so yeah. X Games is right next door, so they had all of this traffic. It was, it was terrible, the traffic, but the events <laughs> mm-hmm. were really good. Um, I did go with my cousin, who he is in a wheelchair. He's a mm-hmm. quadriplegic, so I'm, I'm thinking of okay. letting him know about the wheelchair wash. Um, and he's been in a wheelchair for 15 years, mm-hmm. and so You'll um, come out and meet some great people. A lot of yeah. resources, too. Yeah, so I'm thinking of letting him know about that. But yeah, we we took him along, and it was there were so many people. You know, it was, it was really cool because we got to see a lot about the um, Japanese animation, mm. the different series. Um, I even went to a voice acting panel, so they had information about that. I'm thinking of maybe going into oh, that, good. but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> that's but, a that's yeah, great. It was really Big fun. Industry. Yeah, it was really fun though. That's good. That's nice. I remember you had mentioned taking uh, Access or dial ride or something like that. Oh yeah, we took Access. It's a very good service. We took it again. Um, the only thing was that um, it's just so, so much traffic, so it was hard to find where Actus oh, was picking wow. us up. Oh, so no. we were rock walking, we were going around the, the or near the stable center for maybe half an hour trying to look. Yeah. yeah. And can you mention again what Access is for people who don't uh, know? Yes, Access is um, a transportation service, and you just call in, they can pick you up, and um, pick up time, departure time. Um, I, I don't have the phone number with me, but um, you know the the Access service. I'm glad you brought them up. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will be at our wheelchair wash. They will have a booth because. Mm-hmm. Sometimes what we have found, so access service is a service Mm -hmm. that is uh, run by the county, and it's a transportation service for Mm -hmm. people living with disabilities. And But what we're finding is sometimes people are having challenges with access. They drop them off sometimes in the wrong place, or, Mm -hmm. you know, people can find them. So not only are they going to be at the wheelchair wash, but they will be taking on those concerns that people Mm -hmm. are having, and they're also going to be giving out 
cards to the axis oh, okay. X, the people that are uh, going on the axis. Mm -hmm. uh, they're giving them the flyers to come out to. Oh, that's really that's good. That's good. I yeah. think it's important. You know, a lot of people don't understand the importance of keeping a record or just emailing. And, and mm -hmm. you know, everyone likes to complain, but if you email the right people and mm -hmm. kind of create the right record system, you could actually have some kind of impact. Right, and knowing where to call. Knowing where to call, mm -hmm. yeah, and helping yeah. improve. Uh, one of my big gripes with the San Gabriel Valley, and like I love the San Gabriel mm -hmm. Valley, is that so many of us to have this kind of city centered lifestyle of, oh, I'm from Rosemead, mm -hmm. I'm from San Gabriel, I'm from Temple mm -hmm. City, and my resources are just for that city when really our lifestyles kind of take us everywhere exactly. you know um, that's in, that sounds good. Sounds like a good um, experience. Downtown LA is such, such an interesting place. I know they, you know, when you're going on the right direction. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was just so neglected for a while, yeah. and then it was just shot in the arm with millions of dollars, right? And then the economy kind of crashed. So now it's kind of like hipsters, millionaires, homeless people. You know, All I think, together. yeah, and they just yeah. ruled recently. I, I think like a month ago that you know uh, when people who were homeless and they were leaving their things unattended. People were throwing them away. The law was throwing them away. Mm -hmm. And they just recently ruled that they can't do that. And so I think it's creating, um, I don't know, it's its just changing the dynamic down there. It's changing. My brother lives there, so I'm there somewhat frequently. And um, it's an interesting place, especially when they have two major events or three major events. Or I was just there at, in, at Skid Row about a week and a half ago. And what I learned uh, from businesses that are there is that they were giving they were cite, citing people or at least giving them warnings for those that would come out and donate food in Skid Row. All the businesses that were giving food every week and now they're fining them and there's only like one legal uh, food pantry place. Yeah. So a lot of that is really wow. they're, 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 they're enforcing pushing people out and they are still. I witnessed yeah. that they're throwing out people's cards and where are those people going to go? Yeah, it's they're such moving, a tough... They're coming to us everywhere because, you know, where else are they going to go? Yeah, There's, exactly. The situation is still continuing. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, you know, not to get too political, but yeah. I know, you know, New York City Times Square used to have a lot of homeless people, and now it doesn't. It's a huge tourist kind of moneymaker, and I know L.A. wants to be like that. Uh, but mm -hmm. the problem is, it's just a problem in the U.S., What, what, to, how to deal with mental illness, mm -hmm. how to deal with the homeless population. Yeah. Uh, I heard a story once of um, an immigrant who came to the U.S., and he saw someone homeless... And called 911 because he just couldn't believe it. you know he thought it was an emergency someone's actually you know sleeping in the middle of the park I can't believe this right mm -hmm. and, and we're just so blind to it because we've grown up with mm -hmm. it and also tying yeah, it back to the San Gabriel Valley you know I went to a conference once in Whittier and the woman was uh, talking about a survey she had done with the homeless population in Whittier where they had gone up to all the different homeless people anyone who would talk to them and say where are you from you know what's your situation how many times you've been in the hospital just the basic questions and one of the things that was interesting is that most of the homeless population in Whittier is from Whittier you know and we like to think oh these people are from somewhere else mm -hmm. but really you know there are mm -hmm. there are homeless people a lot of times are from our own areas mm -hmm. and we just you know write them off as Oh, they can, they're, they're not part of us, right, when they really are. But that's a larger issue. And another thing, though, that should be remembered, Sean, is that a lot of the homeless people do not want a home. We have about 30 of these people who are known to the Sheriff's Department in Roseby. We know their names. They've been there for a dozen years. We even tell you where they sleep at night. Yeah. They even have relatives in the area mm -hmm. that would take them in. And they just simply do not want it. They have various addictions, problems, whatever. They want to be the way that they are. And I know this because my wife serves with the People for People Food Pantry, and they give them food. We do what we can to help them. We've talked with them. I know some of their personal stories, and they are simply so traumatized and so much into their own little worlds that they really don't trust anybody, and they just want to be left alone. Now, obviously, at one time in California, we would have committed these people to Camarillo or whatever, but thanks to court decisions, you cannot incarcerate, you cannot force people into a situation if they're not creating any crimes, if they don't want to be. What did that happen? I've heard a little bit about that. What, what year was that when that law changed? Oh, this has been probably 20 years or more ago now. I mean, it's, it's been a long time that they actually forced these people out onto the streets by virtue of a court order that mm -hmm. said you could not keep them there anymore. Now, this is only a small portion of the total homeless population. Most of your homeless people, it is a temporary situation within a matter of months, of weeks even, they find a place for them to be. But you're chronically homeless in many cases 
prefer to be that way. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a good point. And uh, I went to a, a lecture once. Actually, it was a parent conference kind of thing in an El Monte mm-hmm. elementary school, mm-hmm. and they had a homeless group talking to the parents in Spanish. It was it was really nice, and they were telling them, "This is what homeless is. You could be living in someone else's home, you know, because you lost your place, you got kicked out, and you're technically homeless." Mm-hmm. And it's not something I'd ever thought about. And mm-hmm. I think it's nice mm-hmm. to expose people to different yeah, definitions yeah. and resources. And we're seeing at Familia Unida more families that are becoming homeless, yes. and in the county of LA, we've done extensive research on this. There's not even one homeless shelter that's accessible to take in a person in a wheelchair. So what they're doing is they're putting them in temporary motels, mm-hmm. but that's right. a huge, huge problem hmm. because, and we'll call in, you know, we'll, we'll pretend we're the homeless person or, and we are in dis- we're in a wheelchair and they have said to us, we're not accessible. And, or they will tell us that we don't have the manpower to lift the person out of their chair and put them on a bunk bed. So there's a lot of practicality hmm. reasons. There's a lot of hmm. reasons, excuses, but I don't understand how that even can be. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll have to do a whole show sometime about, you yes. know, mental health issues and homelessness. And, you know, there's just so many issues that tie in with it. They're very complicated. Um, yeah. To take it to a lighter yes, topic. Yes, let's go to the uh, wheelchair while she have a delicious <laughs> wheelchair. <laughs> she's, she's good at promoting. That's important. But I wanted to hear about, I know Lucia has some events in front of her. Uh, what, what looks interesting to you that's coming up? And then we'll call it a day. Okay. Well, here I see that in Arcadia, the First Marine Division Band is going to be played. Um, let me just Oh, that's right, here. the Marine Concert in um, mm-hmm. Arcadia. It's yeah, free. it's in Arcadia. It says here that, um, let me see here, concert will take place in at City Hall West Lawn on Thursday evenings from 6.30 to 8 p.m. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Also, um, like Art mentioned, there's going to be several concerts in the park. Um, in, nice. in the cities at Baldwin Park, I believe they're going to be having Sabor. Uh, yeah. um, it's a Santana tribute. Ooh. So they're going to be having that in at Morgan Park from 7 to 9 p.m. this Thursday. Um, if you want more information on that, um, you can call 626-813-5245. Or you can go to the Baldwin Park um, website, and the city website, and they should have that. Um, also in El Monte, I believe they have theirs every Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Yes. I think Ballin Park, El Monte, South El Monte, uh, Temple City, yeah. uh, San Gabriel does not, which is a thorn oh. in my side. <laughs> <laughs> Your but, next project. Yeah, uh, but yeah. you know, there's a lot of great free concerts, and they're yeah. wonderful. I was in one in Whittier last summer, and I saw someone propose there, so I thought that oh, was really nice. nice. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. So I guess want to just yeah. let's call let's call a day. How about you gave your name and your uh, your company and the way to get in contact with you guys, either website or phone number, uh, just in case people want to um, do that. Sure. Thank you again for this opportunity. It was a really great uh, great morning. Uh, name is Kelly Middleton, San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District, and the phone number again is area code 626-814-9466. Um, my name is Vince Vaughn. Thank you, Sean. Um, the website is called uh, FullLivingBenefits.com. My phone number is 626-233-8842. Thanks. Thank you, Sean, and Mid Valley News. This is great. Uh, my name is Irma Resendez. I'm the founder of Familia Unida, living with multiple sclerosis. My telephone number, 323-261-5565. You can call me Irma if you don't want to roll your R's, and, <laughs> and let's have a conversation. Thank you. Nice. And then we also, Lucia and Art are part of our regular staff here or the, 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 around the valley. Um, but go ahead and give a sign off, you guys. Okay, and this is Lucia Flores. Signing off for Michelle. <laughs> Art Lightning for Rosemead Kiwanis at rosemeadkiwanis.org for all the community calendar people. And my phone number is 626 292 6550. And that is, of course, also the number for San Gabriel Valley Tax and Business Services. First time I've ever mentioned that on the air. This is for talking uh, financial planning and the like. We do definitely do that. We also do tax services. Okay, and I just wanted to make a correction about the concert in the park. Um, it's on Thursday, July 12th is when they have Sabor. Um, you can check the um, Ball and Park City website for who's going to be this there this Thursday. 
That's great. And I just wanted to thank all you guys for coming. You guys are all doing interesting things. And uh, it's it's a shame that, you know, working with the newspaper, I learn about so many fascinating people and places. And I'm glad that we now have a venue to kind of bring people together and share. And uh, I just look forward to more. So Excellent thank you guys very idea. much.